One mic. One, 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 one mic. It's just different. One mic with Big Mike. The overall tenor of, of what he's saying is very stupid. And they say his style is too urban for the radio. Maybe it's not racism. Maybe it's placism. Brother has to know his place, right, Bob? One mic with Big Mike. Things aren't always what they seem. A sports talk show. But no subject matter is off limit. Don't just tell me that the reason something's being done is because that's the way it's always been done. Because the first thing I'm going to say to you is slavery. And now, your host. I got the big homie here who needs no introduction. Big Mike. All I need is one mic. Yes, 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 indeed. It is the One Mike with Big Mike show here. On a Monday, 2017, we made it, man. 2017, I'm just, I'm pissed off that my car ain't flying. I thought all kind of stuff was going to be popping off by 17. People was going to be taking vacations on the moon and all that. Nope. Life is the same as it was on December 31st, 2016, and 15, and 14. Anyway, it is the One Mike with Big Mike show, like I said, here on a Monday. Being heard live on Spreaker.com, the Spreaker app, as well as on TuneIn. And, of course, the website, one mic with big mic.com. You guys can also catch the live video stream going on right now on Facebook Live. The uh, Facebook page is at the number one, M-I-C-W-I-T-H-B-I-G-M-I-K-E. The Twitter handle is the same. You're going to need that today because we're back with hashtag put it on the poll. We're going to ask you guys some poll questions or and or and or if you guys got any questions you, that you need answered for the new year or whatever, you know, should you get a new gym membership for 2017 because you're trying to get summertime fine or whatever you know holler at us we'll put it on the poll hashtag put it on the poll at one mic with big mike on twitter we'll ask the people and let the people chime in on uh what they think you should do but as far as the show goes we'll do that throughout the show we'll just throw out little well i'll just throw out little poll questions throughout the show and then we'll see uh how they come back by the end of the show you guys can be a part of the show as well by texting me at 404-902-8104 you can also jump inside my live interactive chat room it's quite simple all you gotta do is uh be listening to me on spreaker or be listening to me on the spreaker app or of course my website one mic with big mic.com you'll see a little thought bubble icon sitting right there at the uh, on the streaming player click on that a couple steps later you'll be in the live interactive chat room where you can holler at me you can holler at all the people who else or whoever else joins the chat room uh you can also i mentioned i'm streaming live video on facebook right you can also leave your comments below the live video stream on facebook and i'll uh, check those intermediately uh throughout the show I, i've been doing a terrible job at that you know people have been hitting me up and i appreciate you guys who, ch- who check out the show on facebook and you weirdos who like to look at people why did i don't know dude i'm i think i'm live i don't see myself though i do not see my stream on facebook what's happening right now it says streaming live to facebook and i don't see myself all right we'll try to figure it out if not you know the show goes on it is actually an audio platform and not necessarily a video one anyway uh it's just an added benefit so today's show hope everybody had a good New Year. Everybody was safe on a new year. You know what I mean? I know over here where I stay at because there's a bunch of Negroes over here. Cats think they still need to shoot up in the sky. You know what I mean? As though gravity doesn't exist for bullets. But I hope everybody was safe and, you know, did whatever you want to do. Had a good time. I ain't do nothing. Stayed in the house. Me and the old lady watched some movies. Uh, got some work done or, you know, what I consider to be work. Some Working on some things. Improving myself. Um, you know, on a daily basis, not necessarily a, a New Year's type of thing, but like daily, I'm trying to, I'm trying to uh, implement some new skills into the repertoire, basically. So anyway, uh, tonight's show is Monday, so of course we're going to be joined by uh, former NFL and SEC tight end for the he played tight end for the Gators in the SEC. They won today versus Iowa in whatever bowl that was. I don't even keep up with the name of the bowls anymore. Uh, but anyway, Ben Troop joins us at seven thirty, the bottom of the hour for Troop Talk. We're going to talk about a lot because we missed. Ben last week he was uh mourning he was mourning the death of George Michael last week <laughs> and he wasn't able to join us um no nah, he wasn't doing that for real but I'm just saying it um so no he'll join us at the bottom of the hour we're, we're going to chop it up about all the stuff that's going on in the NFL pro football everything that happened today in, in the land of college football the wildness that's going on um on this day, our daily feature. It will be daily now. Now, 2017, we'll do on this day daily. We won't do an audio version of it, but we'll, what we'll do is we'll 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 reg, reg, regulate it, relegate it. We'll relegate it to the land of social media. So every day you'll see a couple of uh, on this day posts, some historical things that go on have gone on in the world of sports. 
So we'll do that at the top of the next hour. Um, I already mentioned on this day. Oh, one thing I want to make sure you guys don't or I remind you guys about. Coming up in a couple of weeks, not even a couple of weeks, because I got to work it out. I got some giveaways for you guys. You guys see me wearing like these new era hats on on the show. No, not the ones I wear. Some brand new new era hats that I want to give away to you guys. But I got to figure out a way to do it. Not just, you know, some dumbass trivia question like I know Dominique Wilkins wore number 21. Give me the hat. No, it's going to have to be it's going to have to have to be something that has to do with my show. So I know that you're listening, but I'll figure out a way to do that. I got a couple of of hats. I got a, like a Yankees. I got a couple of Hawks joints, you know, and they're all quality new era or, or Mitchell Mitchell and S. So don't, don't worry about them being no cheap knockoff situations. Um, all right. Now let's set up the show. We already talked about on this day. We already talked about uh, Ben Troop. Coming up on today's show, uh, we got to talk about some NBA stuff. You know, the NBA ain't getting no love from the bros, apparently. Y'all ain't, y'all ain't loving the NBA. And I got to talk to y'all about that, especially here locally, some things going on with the Atlanta Hawks. That, uh, I had a couple of uh, social media conversations with people and some live conversations with people about what's going on here with the Atlanta Hawks. Uh, Ronda Rousey, man. Ronda Rousey. Wow. <laughs> yeah, Ronda Rousey got her ass kicked again, dude. After a year off, uh, I don't remember the young lady's name who did it, but 48 seconds it don't give you a whole lot of time to remember somebody's name. But she she beat the hell out of Ronda Rousey, and now people are talking about her retiring and everything. And here's the thing about the Ronda Rousey thing that I wonder a lot of times, because I was I was a kid when Mike Tyson got beat by Buster Douglas, and the attitude was so different. It was like more of an attitude of, of shock and awe because of how dominant she was. No one was, I, well, I didn't feel like anyone was just waiting around for Mike Tyson to get beat up, you know, so they can clown him. And it seemed to be that was the situation, and that is the situation now. You can't wait for the Warriors to lose. You can't wait for LeBron, something to happen to LeBron. You can't wait for this uh, kind of stuff. And it got me to thinking, like, like, is that just a, is that just like a, a, a remnant of the social media era? That that's the thing now to be to to celebrate another person's demise. You know, hashtag. Let's put it on the poll, Renee. Hashtag. Put it on the poll at one Mike with Big Mike. Brought to us by Sports News and Brews. And Renee, you keep putting poll. You keep putting P O L E. It's like a poll, like a poll question, like the presidential poll. It's not like a stripper poll. It's not that. It's not that. It's just P O L L. So hashtag. Put it on the poll. Um, I want to know. Have we always been? Have we have we always found this much enjoyment in someone else's demise or is it just a social media type thing? And then just put, you know, have we have we always found this much pleasure in a person's demise and then put, you know, tr- figure out some sort of way to, to worry it where you can like, put the two options like that. We've always been this way or that it's a product of social media. However you word it, you get the, the basic premise. Uh, premise of what i'm trying to say but yeah this ronda rousey thing is weird um i read some stuff about how the fight went and i was talking to my man rob the other day about he's a big fight fan about like like styles you know what i mean and apparently um there's a lot of stuff going on in her camp with like her trainer trying to make her into a boxer now the, the little that i know about ronda rousey is she's a chick that's gonna get you on the ground and like try to break your damn arm she ain't just gonna stand up there and try to like box and and kick with you she's gonna get you on the ground and put you in that that arm bar and have your ass tapping out because your arm about to snap apparently she thought she's gonna go out there and box with this chick and this chick put them hands on her <laughs> and i just saw jonathan coachman on on sports center late that night with his hand with his hands in his head like Mm-mm, see that ain't her move and I, apparently he knows a lot about the mma stuff he comes from the world of wwe and all that kind of stuff so that happened. Um, hopefully, before the show's over, I get a chance to talk about these uh, these pipeline protesters. Something happened this weekend at a football game that like let me know that like a lot of the stuff that we think is about it, like marching and all that, black folks I'm talking about, yeah, them folks out there with that pipeline, shh, serious, cause <laughs> serious. You understand what I'm saying? Um, I already mentioned the NBA stuff. That, we, that I want to talk about as well. I'm gonna put something on the poll about this NBA situation as well because I, I can't believe I can't believe some of the stuff I heard over the last couple of days. Um, the NBA play NFL playoffs are here, man. You know every team is in the AFC. Oh, God. the AFC side of the playoffs is gonna make me vomit. It is. It is. And like you know, we'll get into it and talk about it. coaches getting fired. As I sit here and count right now, one, two, three, four, five, 
six jobs are open in the NFL and a possible three. We're looking at a possible nine gigs open. Well, but yeah, it'll still be nine gigs. Like I was thinking of like if 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 Sean Payton gets traded to the Rams or whatever, because that's been kind of uh, rumored. And still be leave another opening just because one's filled. Another one will be open. So, yeah, possible nine openings, man. So, again, we'll talk about all that. we got Ben Troop coming up at the bottom of the hour, so we'll talk to him about that. We had some retirements this past week, uh, this past weekend. A couple guys playing their last uh, football game ever, professional football game ever. One from right here in the ATL, McNair High School's finest, Robert Mathis. He and Steve Smith decided they're going to hang up the cleats. And we'll talk about the playoff matchups, give you guys the scores from yesterday as well. Now, the uh, top the top headlines for the day. You know what? I got to do something with this. Maybe we can sponsor it and put some imaging behind it. But the headlines for the day, um, of course, I just mentioned the NFL playoffs, the, the NFL coaching vacancies, the Browns. <laughs> the Browns uh, found a way to brown up the game yesterday, and they lost to the Pittsburgh Steelers, wrapping up that number one overall pick. And uh, from all early, uh, early predictions, Miles Garrett, the big kid, the defensive end, like six foot five, two seventy, pass rusher out of Texas A and M, looks to be the number one pick so far. You know, we'll get to the combine, we'll get to these senior bowls and all these kind of things, and and we'll figure some stuff out. Still trying to get in touch with my man Alex Cabtaw, so we can uh we can chop it up about all this this draft stuff. He's a real, real uh, uh insightful guy when it comes to this type of stuff. They also have the twelfth pick, if that matters to you guys. So basically, it's a situation where it's like, look, d- just don't f it up. You got the first and the twelfth pick. Don't f it up. Um. James Harden, my gosh, my I mean, you MFers are losing. If the NBA ain't something that you into like now, you losing in life because like things are happening. You know what I mean? Things are happening outside of the football field. Um, let's put this on the poll, Renee. Hashtag put it on the poll at one mic with Big Mike. Brought to us by SportsNewsAndBrews dot com. Um, do when do you start watching NBA basketball? And the three options should be this. At the beginning of the season, uh, Christmas Day, or four options. Let's say Christmas Day, the playoffs, or I don't watch it all. I don't pay attention at all or whatever. I don't watch it all. Let that be the four options for the uh, NBA hashtag. Put it on the poll. Let's put that on the poll now. And in the second hour when I start talking about the NBA, we'll see what the numbers are You know, at that point and kind of wrap the conversation around that a little bit. Uh, Coach K is out. Not not for good. Uh, Coach K has some back problems. Has had them for, had has had them in English for a while, so he's going to be out. I think Jeff Cable Capel, his former point guard, also Jeff Capel is uh, Blake Griffin's coach at Oklahoma. Is it Oklahoma or Oklahoma State? Either one. Uh, he's going to take over. He's going to move over his seat and and, and man the ship while uh, old old Coach K is taking care of his back injury. Like, look, dude. Here's the thing. If if you stop dying your damn hair. People would know exactly how old you are and be like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Then no one would be surprised about Coach K having back problems. He's old as hell. Like, I think Coach K is like 70 years old. And the last thing in the headlines today for me, the headlines today, is uh, the Hawks. The Hawks. Now, this ain't the last thing. I'm sorry. The Hawks are putting feelers out, you know, for some trades. A couple of guys who are looking to probably move here before they lose them at the end of the season. But the number one headline for the day, the number one headline for the day. The Alabama Crimson Tide, who just took care of business against the Washington Huskies in the uh, Peach Bowl over the weekend, have decided, and <laughs> the way they put it, uh, mutually decided that uh, Lane Kiffin will not be, will not continue on with the team throughout the championship game. Like one week. They couldn't wait one week. Like him and, and Nick couldn't wait one more week to get away from each other. And during my reading today, I got an answer to a question that I've been asking for some weeks now. I think I even asked Ben, Ben Troop, about it uh, some time ago. Like, I don't, because I don't understand what all this thing is around Lane Kiffin. Like, if if somebody just told me all these things that people thought about Lane Kiffin, I would on, I would honestly think he was a black coach. I, I would think he's a black dude. Like, this dude ain't got no crimes against him. He ain't done nothing, uh, what's the word people look for, immoral. None of those things, but for whatever, whatever reason, he's looked upon as this pariah. And, like, his biggest fault, from what I hear, is that Lane's not a people person. I, I can relate. I freaking hate people. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, if I've got to wrap it up in a bow, yeah, I freaking hate people. So, for that to be somebody's major downfall, 
that's crazy to me. And I, as I go through this thing, I'll, I'll give you guys some because I'm sure I'm not the only one that doesn't know. You just feel like it had to be something bad because of the way people talk about this dude. And the things that I thought happened were exactly what happened. It wasn't any more than what I thought happened. And I'll get, to, like I said, I'll get to it here in just a second. This is the one mic with Big Mike show. I'm here, Spreaker.com, uh, also on the Spreaker app. Tune in, one mic with Big Mike. I'm live every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday right here. You can also catch the show on demand, by the way. If you don't get a chance to stick around for the entire show, be sure to catch up on demand. You can get there uh, via iTunes, iHeartRadio. You can also check out Stitcher. Uh, Google Play Music, and of course, uh, YouTube, where you can see the audio and the video from uh, tonight's show and any other show that I've done. Uh, make sure you guys are following me and liking my Facebook page where I'm streaming live video right now on Facebook Live. It's www.facebook.com backslash the number one M-I-C-W-I-T-H-B-I-G-M-I-K-E-N. You feel free to text me your thoughts at 404-902-8104 or jump inside my live interactive chat room by listening via Spreaker. Or the website one mic with big mike.com and clicking on the little thought bubble you see, the icon that you see on the streaming player. I still don't know if I'm live right now, to be honest with you. Renee, can you check that for me, please? Because my thing says, my, my little uh, whatever here says that I'm streaming video right now, but apparently Facebook has different a different agenda today and they don't want me to be seen here on the first day, on the first day back. Nope, I'm still. Oh, there I am. I see me. <laughs> that sounded so ignorant and stupid. All right, there I am. So anyway, I want to play you guys something real quick. Uh, here's what Nick Saban had to say about the whole ordeal. Here's what he said happened with with he and Lane. And it, it's it's so like put your boots on because there's a lot of bull crap you're gonna have to like you know wade through to to understand what the hell is going on here. Here's Nick Saban. Well, we recognize that this is a very difficult circumstance uh, in terms of, you know, the sort of distractions that you have. I've been through it myself when I was at the Cleveland Browns taking the Michigan State job. And I think it's a really tough management. And um, so we just thought it was in the best interest of our, our players, our program, uh, and for Lane uh, to uh, assume his responsibilities as the head coach at Florida Atlantic. Uh, you know, it's our goal as a program to – uh, always give our players the best opportunity to be successful, whether it's personally, academically, or athletically, which means on the field. Uh, and this decision was made after we mutually agreed right, <laughs> that this would be the best thing for uh, both parties. Well, I think that the way we went about the last game, uh, whether it was the preparation, the practice, uh, being able to focus on what we needed to do for uh, our team relative to uh, the distractions that occur when you're trying to hire a staff and recruit another place and all these types of things. Uh, and, you know, hey, Lane did the best he could. Uh, it's a difficult circumstance. Uh, we certainly wish him well. And uh, we just we, we both had a meeting, you know, yesterday and again this morning that uh, we thought this would be in the best interest and mutually agreed for both parties to uh, move on. Yeah, no breakup is ever mutual. <laughs> no breakup is ever ever and ever mutual because like it, i i feel like nick saban is such a douchebag and so many of you a-holes like love to worship this dude okay he's real good at coaching football i think he's a terrible human being be honest with you i think he's he he has a, a superiority complex i think he loves being worshipped and anybody around him who doesn't kiss his ass he can't deal with him like Lane Kiffin, like I want, I want to show you guys something. I'll read you guys something. I, I see you, Renee. I'll, I'll repeat the poll question to put to put it on the poll uh, question as well. Here, and you keep putting poll. You even wrote it in the, in the chat room. Look, I'm, look uh, let's let's pause real quick. Okay, for those of you who didn't who didn't hear the show on Friday, or what day was that we did the show? Wednesday when me and Rob did the show before New Year's. Renee has a a uh, miniature human being growing inside of her, right? And it's due here probably in the next next couple of months, sometime during 2017. It'll it'll eject from her cooch in a few months here. But uh, what I, what's not gonna happen? You ain't gonna just keep blaming the little homie because you want to just keep your stripper fantasies alive and keep putting poll. When I'm saying clearly saying it is a poll question, not a poll in the shape of a question mark. It is a p o l l poll. Put it on the poll hashtag. Put it on the poll. Well, while I'm taking this break from my commentary, the question 
regarding the NBA was when do you start list when do you start watching the NBA NBA games uh, the beginning of the season Christmas the playoffs or you don't watch at all hashtag put it on the poll brought to us by sports news and brews dot com all right so Nick apparently <laughs> uh, uh, Lane Kiffin he took a personality test and. His personality test says, um, where is it? Golly. Oh, here it is. On his personality profile, it's showing that he's a conceptual thinker. It means, he says, this is him saying, quote, it means I'm an imaginative, intuitive about ideas, visionary, enjoys the usual and learns by exper- experimenting. Does that explain me and everything that's not in the staff room at Alabama, end quote. See, that's that whole thing when people get caught up in that whole, the process, the process, the process. You know who else has processes? Cult leaders. Yeah. Like people who stand up high and speak down low and have everybody follow their, following their every lock and step, which it sounds to me like Lane Kiffin is just his own man. Uh, he said the majority of the Alabama assistants are labeled, quote, unquote, structural, and that they like guidelines. They're cautious with, with new ideas, and they're predictable. Sure, just pile on the coaches. You're trying to win a national championship right now. Yeah, that's what, like, like I feels like anybody, like anybody who's not into, like, man worship and all that craziness would get tired of Nick Saban. You know, the way this dude berates this guy, this guy on, on the sideline, and everybody think that's cool because he's Nick Saban. But in actuality, it's still two grown-ass men, two grown-ass men who are coworkers, who work together. And for that, like, imagine you going to your job and, and your boss coming at you like that and but in this case it's, it's in front of millions of people and then when I asked about it later it's like yeah one no conversation going on that was an ass chewing and what i said to my homie earlier today like if that's happening in public like you see a dude out and he's disrespecting his woman in public and he's talking all crazy to her in public and all this kind of stuff you can just imagine what's going on behind closed doors when nobody's looking you feel what i'm saying so if you're like people was all on, I can't believe Lane Kiffin's taking Florida Atlantic job, man. Nick, uh, Nick Lane Kiffin's trying to be on the first damn thing smoking out of freaking Tuscaloosa. He even talked about it in this article. It's on uh, CBS Sports. I think my man John Solomon wrote it. Um, He talked about, you know, the money that he's not making. You know, he's talking about how his ex-wife is getting 43 percent or what is it? Thirty four percent. The government is getting some. Uh, his agent is getting three percent. And it leaves him with about 9%. And then he's living in, and he says, quote, and I'm living in Tuscaloosa. He's not a Tuscaloosa type guy. The same way that he wasn't a, a Knoxville type guy. He's an L.A. dude. He loves that type of thing. L.A., now he's in Florida. You know what I mean? Florida, sunshine, you know, pretty girls running around in bikinis. That, that's more Lane Kiffin. And essentially, he took a job because he needed to get get his footing back to get people to understand that he can coach football, regardless of how he deals with boosters and deals with people in administrative positions. He can coach football, and I think we can all agree on that. But the thing, this thing, where now it's it's just the acceptable way, I guess, that you're just going you're going to just put it on on Lane Kiffin. <laughs> you know what I mean, like like, see, here he goes again. Look look at what look look at what. Look, uh, what, what what Lane done done? He done made Nick fire him before the damn championship game. Really? That what happened? Like all that bull crap that you heard on that on that bite, that sound bite of him saying how much of an under overtaking it is and how hard it is, and oh my god, you ain't say that about uh, 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 your homeboy. Wasn't it Kirby Smart, the kid that's the, the guy that's coaching Georgia right now? You ain't say that about him. You know why? Because he's an Alabama guy. He's an Alabama lifer. He's been with you. He went from Georgia and been with, been with Alabama for years and years and years. Lane Kiffin just got there and he came in there with his agenda. Like, look, I just need to come in here and get it get it popping. It was it, and don't get it twisted either. This was a mutual thing. If you guys remember. Nick Saban was the one complaining about these high-powered offenses and these spread offenses and these tempo offenses. They're going to get our kids hurt. But what did Nick do? Nick said, okay, I can't beat them. Let me join them. Brought in Nate. Brought, brought in Lane Kiffin. Start setting all kind of offensive records at Alabama. So you're going to tell me in this clip, he, he talks about how, you know, we, just, we weren't preparing like we thought we should have. One week of practice in three years. You just tell a dude to move on. Come on, man, you need more people. I don't believe. 
I don't believe. Now, nah, do I think do I think Lane Kiffin is a saint? Nah, but what I do think he is is authentic. He's a dude that pretty much just is what you see. And from my perspective, I can rock with that. Any, I think Nick Saban. I think uh, the other dude that's in the championship game. What's his name? My man from from Clemson, Dabo. They're phonies, man. They're phonies, and they're dudes who love being in the position they're in because of the power that comes with it. Of course, they get compensated handsomely, but there's a, there's a power element in there. For example, Dabo Sweeney is quoted as saying, if they, ever start, if they ever start paying the players, he's going to quit. Does that not sound, sound like somebody with a superiority complex? Like, if you ever put these dudes even close to the level that I'm on, where they're just collecting a check, I can't even do it no more. I can't, I can't mess with this. They have to be in this, sub, this subservient role for me to be able to do my job. Man, get your dumb ass out of here. This is, like, this is what I, why I call this the douchebag bowl. Between him and Nick Saban, and he's one of those Alabama guys too. Kirby Smart came up under that Alabama stuff too. Country redneck cuz. This is why I call this the douchebag bowl. Two douchebag ass coaches that now, apparently, because I'm reading today, apparently now Dabo Sweeney has ascended. He's ascended into the ranks of the great coaches. So, man, kill me with that. You know what I mean? I, I talk about this at the beginning of every college football season. It is the time, the time of the year where I'm most hypocritical because I hate that crap. I hate the, 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 the way these kids are used and all this kind of stuff. But it's entertaining. It's football. I love sports. I love college football. You know, so I watch it and I watch it with all the criticisms. <laughs> you know what I mean? But also it, the, the hypocrisy is 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 actually there for me and it, it, it kind of bothers me and now this, this lane kiffin stuff comes out i'm gonna talk more about it here in about another three minutes with my man uh ben troop because i know he's gonna have some stuff to say about this but just to wrap up the weekend real quick uh i mentioned bama beat washington 24 7 and here's i knew what was gonna happen this is why i said it to ben a few weeks ago that or maybe not a few weeks ago like maybe last two weeks ago and the thing i said to him was like the thing that's gonna happen is bama's gonna beat Washington convincingly and people are going to act like this Washington squad is a bum ass squad because you haven't been watching all year look man it's Alabama like the way they play defense with the size and speed of those human beings on defense like I'm just waiting for like 10 years to come where there's like an investigation of what the hell has been being put in food at Alabama <laughs> you know what I mean because like it doesn't make sense it, it just looks different when you see them play and you see people play against them offensively it just looks different i've seen that washington squad play a couple of times this year they got a nice nice team out there just not nice enough to be alabama and the one thing that chris peterson said man is like look now we have tape against the best now it's time to try to ascend ascend to that level good for him you know maybe it happens maybe it doesn't but you know for what it's worth that, that washington squad ain't that the same way that ohio state squad they weren't supposed to be here and i'm not talking about because they didn't play in the championship game what i mean is because at the beginning of the year, everybody was talking about how all they lost all these players. They're going to be young. You know, they had JT Barrett back, but they don't have an Ezekiel Elliott. They don't have, uh, what's the kid's name, Michael Tom- Thomas, the kid that's playing in New Orleans right now, the wide receiver. They don't have all these things on offense that, that the, team, the team last year had. But they're Ohio State. And based on reputation, probably, they, did, they didn't, it wasn't for them to play, or it helped them, I should say, play in the, uh, the, national, well, the college football semifinals. I'm watching Penn State right now, putting up points against USC. These, these are two teams that may have been may have been equally as worthy as Ohio State to play uh, USC because they they got hot late in the season. They're playing they play good football at the end of the season, and uh, Penn State because let's face it, they beat Ohio State and they won it. They won the damn the conference. They won the conference championship, but you know such is life, and it didn't happen for them. All right, it's the one Mike with Big Mike show. I want to come back and, and I want to talk some more about this this Lane Kiffin situation, and I, I'm going to talk uh, about I'm going to talk about it with my man <laughs> with Ben True. Oh man, this is what happens when you take a couple of days off. You come back, your mouth don't work no more. You can't formulate you know, uh, thoughts or comprehensive thoughts. But you know, I get it together. I got another hour and a half at least to get it together. It's the One Mike with Big Mike Show. Spreaker.com is where you're hearing me, or you may be hearing me on the Spreaker app or on TuneIn or One Mike with Big Mike.com. If you're listening on demand, you're probably listening on either one of those four outlets or on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Google Play Music, or you may be watching the replay of the video on YouTube or listening to the, to the uh, audio on YouTube. Uh, make sure you guys are subscribing to the YouTube page and to the iTunes as well. 
and uh, doing all that stuff, favoriting and liking uh, me on iHeartRadio and Google Play and all that stuff as well. Uh, the Facebook live stream is going on right now. One Mike with Big Mike is my Facebook page, so make sure you go get on over there, check it out, like the page as well. 404-902-8104 is the number you want to use to get in touch with the show if you want to text me at that number, or just leave your comments below the live streaming video. I'll be back in about 90 seconds with my man, former NFL and SEC tight end Ben Troop. Well, I have one question for you. Do you or someone you know run a business that could benefit from additional exposure? The One Mike with Big Mike show is currently taking on new sponsors and advertisers. One Mike with Big Mike is currently syndicated across eight different online platforms. And your company's name could be heard and seen across all eight as well. Let's get to work. Please send all inquiries to Mike at OneMikeWithBigMike.com. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your continued support. All I need is One Mike. I'm in almost every school bus and classroom. I go to school with your children. We say the Pledge of Allegiance together. You see me around the neighborhood and you tell me that I'm a pretty good kid. Well, I'm one out of every five children in America and I'm struggling with hunger. This problem is closer than you think. My teacher tells me we can grow up to be whatever we want. I want to grow up to be someone who doesn't go to bed hungry. There's enough food in this country to feed everybody. Please visit feedingamerica.org today and find your local food bank for ways to help. Every dollar you donate helps provide eight meals for kids like me, quietly struggling with hunger. Together, we are Feeding America. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. And now, 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 back to one mic. What are we waiting for? Let's get to it. With Big Mike. Hey, Sal. Hey, Sal. Hey. Welcome back to the One Mike with Big Mike show. The first one of 2017. And hopefully not the last. Nah, it ain't going to be the last. <laughs> At least this week. We got two more this week. I'm being heard right now on Spreaker.com, the Spreaker app, as well as on I, uh, TuneIn, excuse me, and One Mic with Big Mike. Dot com. Make sure you check out the live video stream going on right now on Facebook. Let me switch it over real quick so you can see my man Ben Troop's wonderful, handsome face. Make sure you keep this number handy, 404-902-8104. The video stream, by the way, is being uh, seen. You can see it on Facebook Live, www.facebook.com, backslash the number one, M-I-C-W-I-T-H-B-I-G-M-I-K-E. And without further ado, because it's been two weeks, let's go ahead and bring him in right now. We're talking NFL and college football with former NFL and SEC tight end Ben Troop. Ben Troop at the 15, at the 10, hurdle the man spins to the 5. Oh my, still on his feet, still pounding to the goal line. He's going to score! He's going to score! True talk. True talk. talk. We head into the top. If, if you come, come and come on. on. One mic with Big Mike. What's good, dog? Happy New Year to you, brother. Hey, happy New Year to you too, man. I'm just enjoying some of these uh, bowl games, man. They, I mean, it shows why, man. Uh, you love college football, man. You watch some good football last, I guess, like week and a half or so. You sure you ain't just enjoying it because you, because your squad won. That Florida, Florida took care of uh, of uh, of uh, Iowa early today. It, it makes you know it, it definitely makes it easy, <laughs> man. But I'm not gonna lie to you, man. That uh, that Peach Bowl and that uh, and that Orange Bowl, man. Yeah. It, it, it was it was some good games, man. It was some. I mean, you know, I. I I'm not a I'm not a Florida State fan by no means, man. But at the same time, man, the way that game played out, yeah. man, you know, down in the Orange Bowl, that's why you love football, man. That's why you that's why you go watch, man. Harbaugh, you know, and them boys in Michigan, man, they came to play, man. You know, Jimbo and them boys, they had some for them in the end. But you know, I think the best player showed, you know, Dalvin Cook, man, grown man. Absolutely. I mean, he, he don't he don't need but a scene, man. And you know, you look at what happened in uh, in you know uh, in the Peach Bowl, man, and. uh Washington gonna be kicking themselves in the foot. I don't think they was gonna win the game, but you know the whole situation with uh, you know with Lane Kiffin deciding to go on, you know they're not coaching the national championship. It looked like he didn't even coach in, in the Peach Bowl. <laughs> See, you can't offense. do that, man. But, um, you can't I'm do just that. Saying, man. I mean, listen, listen. And we, we, we talked about this, Mike. Nick Saban is a guy that he has a. He lets his office, he lets his coordinators coach, but it's a stronghold on. It's like a level of pressure. On these people, man, that, you know, sometimes, listen, you've had a new job before. I've had a new job before. 
if I got a new job and I'm gonna put it in the last two weeks, right. I'm just counting down the days. <laughs> right. I'm just, I'm, I'm just, I'm just counting them down, dude. And especially if you hate your boss already, yourself. dude. I'm, listen, especially when it seems like when you coach on the guys like Earl Meyer, Nick Saban, or Harbaugh, they're so meticulous that even though you own the staff and you're a grown man, and you got responsibilities, you get treated just like the players. Do what I say, and that's it. Yeah, dude. That's... Yeah, I know you get to run the offense. Yeah, I know you get to run the defense, and sometimes. If I'm going from a corner to a head coach, my mind was made up when I signed that contract back then. I just happened to be on the best, you know, coaching on the best team in college football. But, uh, hey, man, I I, th- I don't think it was a mutual understanding. I just nah, think that no. uh, no. Nick Saban was like, I think Nick Saban was like, listen, I can't control this dude no more. He, he got his, you know, he FAU head coach. Let me just let him go. And somebody just tell, tell Steve Sarkeesian, man, to stop eating boogers on national TV. But I guess that happens, too. Well, yeah. Crazy stuff yeah. happens. Hey, dude, that dude, that dude is a, is a known drunk. If if eating bugs is the is the is, is the calmest thing he does, I think everybody will be all right. The other voice that you're hearing is my man Ben Troop. We do it every Monday. It's called Troop Talk. I uh, probably got a couple more episodes because we're gonna do it all the way through the through the Super Bowl, all the way through the entire football season. You guys make sure you're following him on Twitter and Instagram at b e n t r o u p e eighty four, and check out his brand new website, uh, Ben Troop eighty four. Uh, dot com. You guys know anybody who needs a uh, inspirational speaker, a motivational speaker? I'll let my man Ben Troop eighty four dot com. Now let, let's 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 continue on with this Lane Kiffin thing because I was just talking about it before you came on, man. And like I, I'm not a, I'm not a, a person who's big on like man worship and and all that kind of stuff. And I think the guys like like Nick Saban they get off on that. And that's this is why he feels like he's able to treat a guy like Lane Kiffin because he feels like he, he threw Lane Kiffin a lifeline, extended a little olive branch to him, brought him in when really no one, no one wanted to do anything to do with him. And so because of that, now you're beholden to me, and I can treat you like you want to. And like you said, I got a new gig now, cuz. So if you want to start talking stuff to me now, we might have a problem. And I, if, if I'm speculating, Ben, I'm thinking these two meetings that, that, that Nick Saban are describing as meetings, I think they were more confrontational than that. I think it was like he came oh, at yeah, my yeah. man with some with some foul stuff, and my man was like, "You know what? Cause f you, dog. We can we can win this championship, and I'll be out your life." And he was like, "Nope, you can be out my life today," <laughs> and you know, and that's I, that's how I picture it going down. Yeah, and, and and the thing, and like you just said too, you know, uh, everybody everybody can say what they want about Elaine Kiffin, man. But they, I mean, the way this offense been putting up numbers, taking nothing away from right. you know, minus the uh, you know the Peach Bowl. <laughs> Lane Kiffin earned his his spot at FAU, and and I think, and like we said, he went to FAU because that's the only school that was willing to deal with his baggage, as well as what they was getting in the head coach. I mean, he can he can build his way up, but I do agree. I get the head coach's job. That's why I came. I came here to build right. my resume up. I came here to get my name back out to let them know that I. And can let's not forget, Ben. Nick Saban you know. needed him. When he was complaining yeah, about yeah. Ole Miss's high powered offense and all, and Oregon's high powered offense, and no one would listen to him, what do he do? Let me go get me a guy that can run the same same thing to spread offenses up tempo stuff because apparently I'm falling behind as as far as uh, offensive technology goes and the way people are running offense. So it was it was a mutual thing. It wasn't just like people think Nick Saban was helping Lane Kiffin. Yeah, he was. But guess what? He needed that dude too. He needed him to to revamp that offense that was was starting to be three yards in a cloud of dust. So I think what, that what part they, of it was mutual. Got back to though, yeah, it was. It, it was. Like the Lane Kiffin situation, I already knew what it was. Nick Saban knew that if I, I'm like a, I'm, I'm kind of like the Bill Belichick of, uh, of coaching. Nobody's gonna really. Why you gonna want to question what I do? You ain't gonna question me. You, you don't. You might not like what I do, but I control these uh, news conferences and different things. But I think Lane Kiffin, like you say, when Lane Kiffin say. Lane Kiffin say after the game, oh, yeah, we just had a disagreement. And then, you know, uh, Nick, uh, Nick Saban comes to know, you know, that's, that's, that's just a good old, you know. Yeah, that's an ass chewing. Like, what is and that see, about, and man? See, and, see, and, 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 and the thing about it is I'm a grown man being ridiculed in the media. <laughs> things are supposed to be kept in-house by, by my by my head coach. Yet, coach, you can say whatever you want. I'm the offensive coordinator. So I, while you're going to get the glory for the team, I'm going to get the glory for this offense. You don't run it. Yeah, you don't like it when we do certain things. You don't like certain calls. But I said, listen, Lane Kiffin showed the whole world just how much, how valuable I am. Absolutely. You see how vanilla they looked on, 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 on offense? I'm just going to hand the ball off to Big Bo Scarborough and Hope, who, who is a Derrick Henry clone. I'm just going to hand it to him and hope so. Because that offense looks awful. I'm talking about awful. And the thing about it is, is, when you want a guy like Nick Saban, take nothing away from him. I think you, I think you hit on the head, Mike. That man worships what he loves. He loves mm-hmm. the fact 
Oh, when he walks in the room, it's Nick Saban. That's why he can't coach oh, in the NFL, B. Coach Saban. And, 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 and the thing is, and I, we, I was talking with my brother about it, and I said, I said, uh, Nick Saban tried to say the reason why I didn't make it to Miami is because he was in the Drew Brees uh, sweepstakes and he didn't get Drew Brees. No, you can't control grown right. men. Exactly. You can't control them. And when you were in college, everybody knows we control everything. I'm the head coach at the University of Alabama. I can control everything. Everything. And the thing about it is, is Lane Kiffin, just, I bet you Lane Kiffin looked at Sarkeesian and go, you think that's what you want now, but I understand. <laughs> no, did you hear what Lane said? Lane was like, Lane was like, uh, 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 Steve ain't me. He can deal with a dude like, like, like Lane Kiffin. I'm just not really that good at it. <laughs> so basically what he's saying is like, yeah, he'll cower down. Not me because I'm about to go get me a, be- hey. a new job where I'm the dude. I, and the thing about this is, don't you know one of the most highly, one of the most, you know, uh, talk about offense is going to be next year is going to be FAU. They expect their offense to pick up, you know, they don't, they don't expect them to miss the beat. But I, but I mean, you know, like you said, with Lane Kiffin, man, I just think at the end of the day, I'm, listen, I'm a coordinator. I'm going from a coordinator. It doesn't matter if it's Alabama to a head coaching job. Mm-hmm. You know, Coach Lockley, who was, uh, who was on the Florida staff, who was coaching the running backs with Alabama, they, I think it, it was a report that was saying that Florida offered him a job. But the difference is they offered him another uh, coordinator position. Right. He's not getting the head coaching job, so of course he's going to say, I'm just focused on the next game. But when I'm the head man, still getting talked to like, you know, <laughs> right, like, like a I'm child. the to you, man, I got to go. It's, it's almost like Lane Kevin woke up and said, listen, he told us, like, I'm about to go let this dude know today my last day. I'm, I'm, I've already told my players, I've already let them know, man, I appreciate y'all with everything, you know, but you only a coordinator and an assistant coach to become a head coach. I can't take one more day of this dude. I can't look at him. If he come up to me, I'm just saying so I'm gonna just let him have it. Come on, we came to a mutual agreement. Why don't you let Lane that. say that? Right, ain't nothing mutual about that. <laughs> somebody broke yeah. up with somebody else. The other voice exactly. that you're hearing is a second round pick for the Titans in 04. He's also a Georgia Florida game Hall of Famer, Ben Troop. We do it every Monday called Troop Talk at B E N T R O U P E eighty four is what he, is what he is on Instagram and Twitter, and his website is the same thing, Ben Troop eighty four dot com. Now you talk about these 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 ball games. You know, I'm a dude. I don't catch the early ones, but then you know, Lamar Jackson hit the field, and I was like, "All right, let's see what my man's gonna gonna come with." And oh my God, Ben! <laughs> oh my! And here's the thing too that happens with these bowl games, and that I hate that people do. They become prisoners prisoners of the moment and feel like, "Oh man, look at look what's happening now." What y'all was saying about Lamar Lamar Jackson? Lamar Jackson still cold. The problem is he couldn't get he he couldn't get any protection at at the, at the latter parts of the season, and two like. Okay, people get tired of success a lot. You know, he started hot in the first game. And he didn't even, like, come on strong. He started the first game. So now, because of the society that we live in, and I asked this question earlier on the show about people just waiting for people who are great at things to fail. Like, we, 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 we've become that as a society. Um, I even heard somebody today say if they can get the uh, – Paul Feinbaum said if he can get his Heisman vote back, he'd go to Sean Watson because of what Deshaun Watson did on, on Saturday, which wasn't great. He didn't play great on Saturday. Yeah. But they won. They won a football game going away against Ohio State. What do you think about all that? With everything I just said, just give me your your synopsis on all that, and we'll move on to the damn to the NFL stuff. I, I mean, I, I couldn't agree with you uh, more. We're talking about one game. One hey. game doesn't define a Heisman Trophy. The season defines a Heisman Trophy winner. When you break down Lamar, Lamar Jackson and say, forget the fact that the boy had thirty yard passes, he had twenty touchdowns rushing at fifteen hundred. That's one of the tops in the nation rushing. So he's, he's out rushing the number one rusher who only rushed the ball. But I just think LSU get tired of hearing about Lamar Jackson. They got it's, it's the media, and it's not the media's fault, but you say, okay, let's see. And somebody forgot to tell Lamar Jackson's offensive lineman that you're going to have to block. At <laughs> some point, like right. Like you hit a block. Like you're gonna, you know. And the thing about this is Lamar Jackson had to understand, too, you can't live up to that Heisman just because you're in this ball game. You already won it. And listen, man. You it ain't like you long. It ain't like you won every game you did in college football. You just mm-hmm. did enough to get that high. So I agree, man. Deshaun Watson is Deshaun Watson. In my opinion is one of the best players of college football. But if you're looking at college football last year, it was Lamar Jackson. The young man was a beast, and just because he had one bad outing, it don't take nothing away from what he's done. The boy deserves everything. He got 19 years old. Did what he gonna do? But he understand too. This is how 2017 gonna be. You yeah. can't hide this year. Yep. See now. You are the game plan. Our goal is to is to is to make you uncomfortable. But if he, but like I said, you ain't gonna see hardly too many people win the highest two years in a row. To win it, to win it is enough, man. I just think he had a bad day. Not just him, and as you, 
I'm sorry, Louisville had a bad day. LSU had a good day. LSU made Louisville play their style of football. And usually when they do that, they usually come out on the winning end. Absolutely. All right, let's move on to the NFL. We've got the playoff set right now. we got uh, this weekend coming up, Oakland against Houston. Uh, <laughs> Matt McGloin. It, it might not even be him. It may be the dude they drafted last year against Brock Osweiler. Or, if we're lucky, <laughs> Tom Savage. we got Detroit and Seattle. That might be a, a, a nice one up in, up in Seattle. Um, then Sunday you got Miami and Pittsburgh and the New York Gi- Giants and the Green Bay Packers. I think the NFC side of the, of the playoffs is going to be the most entertaining. Uh, the AFC side, God, you know what's going to happen? I'm going to have to watch Alex Smith play quarterback. You know, <laughs> it's like some real quarterbacks in here, like two big Ben and Tom Brady. And then all of a sudden, like, here's Alex Smith and a bunch of bums. What's going on, mm-hmm. man? Is, is the season too long, Ben? Because you saw like in the last two weeks, this rash of injuries. Is the season just too damn long? It, it is too long, man, but unfortunately, man, it, it, it's just what it is. I mean, I think because of how the season is going and the injuries actually help, as far as like when these guys got to go back to the bargain table, which is coming up here real soon with the CBA, to be like, listen, we can't make the preseason sh- shorter and the season longer. You know, you can make it to where you get the two injury reserves that people can come off with. Yeah, man, it's definitely too long. I mean, because at the end of the day, we're talking about, we're talking about, 18 weeks of football because yeah, if it's 17 and then you still got the you still got the uh, you know the off week or whatever yeah it is too long and then like you were saying look at how look at how the playoffs are affected by this stuff I mean true indeed I think the only reason why uh, you know um, you look at some of these playoff games the only reason why Oakland may make it to the second round is because they play in Houston oh, God. you know they, you know it's like because think about it. Mac, you know, McGloin and, and, you know, Brock, I, nobody wants to see that. No. Nobody wants to see that. And then you're the only thing on TV. It's like a Thursday night football it's game. It's like I'm being punished, Nationally. dude. Nationally. Yeah, it, feel, it feels like I'm being punished by football, dog. That's what it feels like, my man. And, 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 and people and people saying all this, listen, people saying all this, saying it's setting up really, really nice for the New York Giants because while I like Green Bay, I don't love Green Bay. While I like Aaron Rodgers, that defense – if you looked at it yesterday, your quarterbacks can't cover nobody on the right yeah. side of the ball. On the ball. Like, what, and what you think they are going to do? And Victor Cruz, I love Victor Cruz. Victor Cruz needs to stop saying stuff like, uh, New England don't want to see us. Victor, this might be your last year in New York. Please you have been looking wrecked. Probably should have been last year. And so, so, I mean, I, it's, to me, college football and NFL is set up the same way. In the last 15 years, when you look at uh, in the NFL and the AFC, it's either been Peyton Manning, Ben Roethlisberger, uh, and um, Tom Brady. Yeah. It's setting up like that again. It, it ain't really been no. The NFC is the only thing that may switch up a little bit. You know, the AFC is going to be the same cast of characters. So I'm still looking. I'm still going to watch, man, because the, you know the playoffs. There's something crazy right. might happen. You have to watch, right? You know, something make you. something. Yeah, something crazy might happen, man, and. You know, you might be missing out on something, man. So I just think that while everybody seems as though it's like it's New England, Dallas, and everybody else, <laughs> the only t- the, the one team that Dallas did not want to make it in, they made it in there. They ain't want New York. The Giants, right? Right. They, 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 right. They, did not, they, did not, they did not want them to get in. Washington, you know, is a team that should have got in, but you play a team that's already in. They made sure you because y'all the NFC team, y'all didn't get in. But I still think, you know, the playoffs – is is the best football because everything matters. Every ask. call matters. Now you ain't finna do no crazy stuff. I ain't finna be none of that. But I just think that listen, Calvin Johnson first year out of the league and they make it in. I think that kind of stuff is crazy. Yeah, it's, I mean you same know, thing happened remember with Tiki out, Barber. Yeah. Remember Tiki Barber retired? Yeah. And then, you know, it's kinda like Eli it. Eli's yeah, Eli's security blanket went away. He had to grow up and be a big boy and he did. And they ended up winning the championship. Let me ask you about the Falcons, man. I, I wanna ask you a couple of things about the Falcons because they 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 kinda got me in a little bit of a quandary here. Uh one, this being, in my opinion, a do or die season for the Falcons because Matt Ryan I don't feel like he can keep starting over and this kid Kyle Shanahan is going like he might as well be Lane Kiffin right now he's out the door as soon as the playoff run is over which means Matt Ryan this offense is going to have to start over again the second thing I want to ask you about is him being considered for as as an MVP front runner have you ever did you ever think you'd see that coming like I've been somebody who's been labeled at times on radio as a Matt Ryan apologist because I always thought the dude was a good quarterback I never thought he was great I thought he had the ability to maybe 
touch his meter might touch greatness a little bit, but I never thought he'd be Tom Brady or Aaron Rodgers that, that sustained greatness. But I felt like he was a very good quarterback. And 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 lastly, uh, as we move forward, as they move forward this bye week, they're gonna play a real team in the, in the second round of the playoffs. These last four weeks, Ben, yeah. have been a bunch of bums. Can a yeah. team get a false sense of security? You've been on playing in, uh, on some NFL team. Can a team get a false sense of security playing bums like uh, the Carolina Panthers and the Saints and the Rams and the 49ers back to back to back to back weeks and then going to the playoffs? And it's like, oh, <laughs> this is a real team now. What are we going to do? Do you see that happening with this Falcon squad? Uh, well, one, well, first, well, you know, to ask your first question, I, you know, I know it's like five of them. I, I? I, I do, I do, I do, I do, I do think it's a do or die. I do think this has to be a year for them, you know, because, like you say, they got, they got a, they got a remedy for most people. They, they got two running backs that can, that can run and kick. Mm-hmm. They can do it all with a running game switch, and they've won without Julio being the star. They, they role right. player Gabriel, some new, they, they step up now. With Shanahan leaving, man, like he was saying, that's going to hurt. Because Shanahan is proven, man, I can call plays, man. And even though we've seen, you know, Atlanta put up numbers before, and, you know, they ain't number one seed and number two seed and different things, I think, like you say, those last four weeks, they did what they were supposed to do. Mm-hmm. See, the Atlanta teams that are old, they would have lost against the Warriors. They wouldn't have blew them out. Drew Brees would have found a way to, to outscore them. Now, the defense is manufacturing some good defense these last, you know, uh, four weeks of the season. But, right. but, but the only thing that scares me about the Atlanta Falcons is it ain't been no pressure this year. Carolina wasn't Carolina. Tampa Bay wasn't Tampa Bay. They ran away with the division, yeah. in a sense, even though they had to. So my thing is, when every this is my the Atlanta Falcons, and, and just like the Georgia Bulldogs, when everybody's watching, when it's all on the line, can you do it then? Because see, there are no do-overs. So the thing about this is, I think Matt Ryan is moving definitely, you know, an MVP candidate. But yeah. see, I think what's going to hurt Matt Ryan is we've seen his greatness before. Is his greatness better than Aaron Rodgers when what Aaron Rodgers had to do to come back to to go on that run to win? I think see, one and, of those and, guys and, got a shot. And here's know? the other point too: when you talk about Aaron Rodgers, they've been pretty much playing playoff uh, football for the last five weeks. Like and we've seen here year after year, who wins the Super Bowl? The team that ends up hot at the end of the season, and they've been yeah. playing for their lives at the towards the end of the season. The last four or five weeks, that Green Bay team has been playing playoff football. Basically, if I lose, if we lose, we don't get in. The Falcons have been kind of, like I said, coasting, man. It's the Rams and the 49ers and the Panthers, these bum-ass teams, to, to have to ramp it up. Like, I feel like I'm not, a, like, a fan of the Falcons or anything, but for the people here in my city, it's like th- there's got to be a sense of nerve. I know everyone wants to walk around with the, bro- with the, with the confidence look, but there has to be a sense of nervousness, don't you think? And they have, yeah, because because like you were saying, it will be different if this is the first year Atlanta has shown you some promise. And you know, I remember about two or three years ago when they was thirteen to three, they was number one seed, and then they get the first round by that same and Green Bay team. Yeah, exactly. So so what? What well, Atlanta is a listen. At the end of the day, yeah, we 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 from Georgia and we live and we you know you root for the Falcons, but it's, it almost might as well be Atlanta, Missouri. You're gonna have to show us. <laughs> you're just gonna have to show us, <laughs> and that's that, because because because. The thing about it is, is until you get over that hump, you're just going to be looked at as a great regular season team that can put up great offensive numbers. But, but think about it. You got arguably the best receiver in the league. You got, you know, you got two of the best, you know, young running backs. One of them is the pro mm-hmm. bowler, you know, in the league. You got, a, you got an offensive line that can do things. But can you do it when the pressure is on? Can Matty Ice really be Matty Ice, you know, when the pressure is on? And the thing about it is, is like you were saying, you playing against teams that's been here before. Yeah. Real you know, nice New York, they ain't scared of nobody. Mm-hmm. Uh, they ain't scared to play nobody. And it seems like they Seattle. get their money's worth out of their defense all of a sudden. Exactly. Exactly. Seattle is, and, and and New York getting their money's out of their money's worth out of their defense, mine is JPP. Yeah, exactly. You know what? Jing has been out. I mean, Antonio Roger Marty is playing, you know, like a pro bowler yeah, Absolutely. Right now. I mean, so I just I just think that I, I, I want to see Atlanta has to do it because can't nobody, ain't nobody going to remember who you played in there and, and, and uh, what, uh, what you was, uh, you know, what was your position going to the playoffs if you don't do what you're supposed to. If you ain't playing that NFC championship game, but, you know, even representing the NFC in the Super Bowl, people going to say, well, uh, you know, well, all right, Matt. But, you know, that's like saying Drew, Drew Brees don't make it to the Pro Bowl no more because he, he done led the league in passing for so many years. They expect that. Mm-hmm. They, he can judge on team success now. Yeah. Because you expect that from him, so I, I hope that I hope that Matty Ice and boys they definitely got a form. Them two running backs, 
make it so much easier for him because he, he while he still has to do it all in the passing game, being able to throw it to them boys yeah. makes it easier for him. But the thing about it is a good defense, they're going to take your best asset away, which is hard to do because you got a lot of guys. But yeah, dude, I, didn't I, he I throw the like, touchdown man, pass to like 15 show. straight guys or 15 different guys this oh. year? That's crazy. Yeah, that's and, that's and, amazing. And me, that's that's the that's the that's the maturation of a Matty Ice. Listen, Matty Ice, in my opinion, he just came. He, it's like Charles Barkley coming through, you know, the NBA when um you know when Michael Jordan was there. He just came in there when you had freaking I got to deal with Aaron Rodgers and, and Tom Brady. Right. You got Russell Wilson out there. And he just happened to come in with some guys, Cam Newton, the guys like that. So this is the thing. Yes, your division represented the NFC last year with the Carolina Panthers going fifteen and one, whatever it was going to sell. And the thing about it is, you feeling that pressure every year, Maddie, man. Because the thing is, Maddie, I've got all the tools. When it comes to throwing that football, he got all the tools. He can make all the throws. Yeah, he can. It's now is okay. I got a, I got an okay defense. So I think what they're really doing for Matt Ryan, those boys, they're eliminating excuses. Y'all ain't got no excuses. Your defense ain't the best. Vic Beasley and those boys, every time Vic Beasley get a sack, he, he doing a little, he, you know, he twists it on the inside. But it's it's, so, like, it's yeah. like every time he twists, he get a sack. But the thing is, a good team is going to take your best asset away on defense. They're going to force you to do the things you don't do well, well, and hopefully you can overcome that and you're going to win a playoff game. Because like I say, if Matty Ice and those boys don't win it, we talk about the Atlanta Falcons because we here in the state of Georgia, mm-hmm. you know, we're doing black around the country. People saying, yeah, okay, Wait and but see. can they do it when the pressure's on? Absolutely. So hopefully, if they can live up to the pressure, man, you know, it's a joke. Because like I say, Kyle Shanahan, the, t- the clock is out, his phone is blowing oh, yeah. up. He's gone. Right now. Dude, it's like six openings and possibly nine openings. He's going to get one of them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like one of them is coming his way. Um, yeah. we got a couple minutes left here with uh, Ben Troop on True Talk right here on the One Mic with Big Mike Show. We do it every Monday. Make sure you guys are following Ben. On Twitter and Instagram at B E N T R O U P E eighty four and check out his new website, Ben Troop eighty four dot com. You mentioned Cam Newton just now. And he 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 came up in my thoughts today. He uh guys like Romo, Colin Kaepernick, uh JJ Watt, guys that coming going into next season, I'm I'm uncertain about. We saw Romo play for one for one 